So going forward to our last topic of the night, the DAC deal finally got done. And I'm talking big money deal, $164 million contract with, I believe, $126 million guaranteed. This is the tweet that I put up, and I asked Ben to put it up there, because once I saw that all the guaranteed money, $126 million guaranteed, and $75 million in the first year, like, wow, good Lord. Good for Dak, though. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say he got overpaid, you know, and sure. maybe he did. Um, it's Right now, it's so tough to figure out is my quarterback a franchise guy? And I think Dak's like right on that edge, you know. I've always said that Kirk Cousins is the Mendoza line for is your quarterback good or not. If your quarterback's worse than Kirk Cousins, your quarterback's probably not that good. If your quarterback <laughs> is better than Kirk Cousins, then he's probably a pretty <laughs> solid quarterback. He's the Mendoza line for quarterbacks. And Kirk I Cousins like has a massive deal as a free agent. So um, I think Dak's better than Kirk Cousins, by the way. The thing that I've heard from other folks about talking about you know, this deal and, and even about quarterbacks in the NFL in general and giving big deals out. Does your quarterback, you know, when, when you sign a quarterback to that huge deal and they cost a large percentage of the salary cap, you're going to have other players that are going to walk, whether it's, you know, a really good tackle or a, a good receiver, tight end. Uh, you're going to lose those players in free agency and you're going to lose a ta talent level at that position. So, if you're going to give this quarterback this kind of money, does the quarterback elevate the rest of the team when maybe the talent isn't quite there? We know throughout his time in New England that Brady did it. Pat Mahomes definitely does it. I think Russell Wilson does it. I think Deshaun Watson does it. You know, so which guys, you know, Aaron Rodgers has certainly done it. Roethlisberger is probably up there as well. Um, which guys elevate your team when you're not necessarily, you know, having the, the full – you know, load of talent that you normally would have. So I think that's the question that you have to ask with Dak Prescott. I think the Cowboys also looked at the quarterback landscape and said, you know, who's left? You know, Gardner Minshew, you know, who the Pats might sign. That'd be interesting. Um, you know, who are you going to try to go after? You know, Roethlisberger stayed in Pittsburgh for another year. Um, I don't think the Cowboys have the draft capital to move up to get anybody in the draft. Um, you know, they, I think they have a few too many other needs too. So, you know, you have Ezekiel Elliott locked up with a decent amount of money. Amari Cooper has got a decent amount of money. Um, you just drafted CD Lamb, who I thought was the best receiver in the draft last year. And I, he looks awesome. Um, so you kind of got to win with these guys for the next three or four years. So I think, you know, the Joneses looked at it and said, you got to secure this quarterback position or else, you know, we're starting over. Because there's really not a guy in free agency right now that can that's anywhere close to Dak Prescott. So I think this made sense for the Cowboys. No, I, I agree. It definitely made sense for the Cowboys. And I've said this on this show many a times. There's not many NFL caliber quarterbacks out there right now. And there's 32 teams that need one. But there's not 32 NFL caliber quarterbacks out there right now. So teams are going to shuffle around to try to make a move to get one. And so... I think this was the Cowboys saying, we have a guy that is good for our system, that plays good, like with our players that we have now, like you said, and gives us a chance to kind of try to win now. Um, and I think this is one of those things where, honestly, it, is he overpaid? Uh, yeah, that's something that somebody could definitely argue, but it, it goes back to that, that supply and demand thing that we just talked about even a couple of shows ago. Because honestly, I'd argue, is, is, is he a better Cowboy quarterback than Roger Staubach or Troy Aikman? Heck no. Heck no. But those guys didn't get paid $164 million. It just so happens that he's playing, playing in the era of big contracts. And so, and he's a quarterback, so he's getting paid that big money. And arguably, like I said, it, is he valued at that much? In my opinion, no. But you did have to go ahead and secure this guy to have a chance to win. And, and obviously, when we look at the way it breaks down contract-wise, you know, you got Patrick Mahomes at the top making, I believe, $45 million a year. And then now you got Dak coming in in second place making, I believe, $41 million or $40 million a year. And then Deshaun Watson's in third place making $39 million a year. So in my opinion, you know, Deshaun Watson is of higher value and worth more than Dak Prescott. 
and should be making more money than him. But it's like I said, it's a supply and demand thing. And when Deshaun signed his contract, he signed it before Dak did. So it's just one of those things. But I mean, if you're looking at value, those are the top three paid quarterbacks in the NFL currently right now. And like I said, I, I value Patrick Mahomes and, and Watson over Dak. But I think the Cowboys are looking when when before the guy broke his ankle, before Dak Prescott broke his ankle, the team was four and one. The team was four and one. They were looking pretty good. He was playing good with Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb. They have one of the best offensive lines in the league. So I, I think this is just the right move by, by the Dallas Cowboys. Like I said, when you don't have many NFL caliber quarterbacks out there, this is the right move in securing a guy that gives you the best chance to win right now. Yeah, I agree. And I think just the, the amount of money, it's, you know, whatever quarterback is halfway decent and a free agent, they're going to get the big deal. That's going to reset the market. You know, it's more that the other positional players are now like, you know, we got to start resetting the market at our position. You know, I remember Von Miller when he got his big deal as a defensive end. He wanted to, you know, raise the the level of defensive end pay in the NFL because he's saying all these quarterbacks are getting money, but I'm the best defensive end in the NFL and I'm not getting, you know, the, the big time money. So we need to raise the rest of the positions as well. Um, so that's the going rate for quarterbacks, you know, and I think that's what, what happened with Dak Prescott. He's very good. I don't know if he's great, but like you mentioned, you look, you know, the Cowboys look at the quarterback landscape and there's not much there that they can sign and they, they, they really can't move up in the draft. So I think this makes total sense uh, for the Cowboys. Um, I don't like the Cowboys, but I like Dak Prescott. <laughs> I think he's a good guy. So good for him. Uh, folks, that is going to do it for this week on Comeback Sports. We had a lot of great topics. This was a, a show with a lot of different sports involved, a lot of different subject matters. So I think you're going to like this one a lot. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube to Comeback Sports. Make sure you like us there as well. And also make sure you follow us on our Twitter handles. They're at the bottom of the screen. Make sure you check that out. We are on live every Wednesday night. We try to get on on 8 o'clock, around 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. So make sure you tune into YouTube. To check that out. You can also check out all our videos after the fact. Our producer, Ben Kudo, does a great job cutting them up to the different the different topics or then cut up into different segments. So you can watch one segment, you can watch a couple segments, or you can watch the entire show. It's all up to you. Just make sure you subscribe on YouTube. It's been a fun one this week, folks. We'll see you next time on Comeback Sports. Brandon, have a good week, my friend. See you, Pat. Bye, everybody.